Isaiah chapters 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18 But the Lord will have mercy on the descendants of Jacob. He will choose Israel as his special people once again. He will bring them back to settle once again in their own land and people from many different nations will come and join them there and unite with the people of Israel. The nations of the world will help the people of Israel to return and those who come to live in the Lord's land will serve them. Those who captured Israel will themselves be captured and Israel will rule over its enemies. In that wonderful day when the Lord gives his people rest from sorrow and fear, from slavery and chains, you will taunt the king of Babylon. You will say, the mighty man has been destroyed. Yes, your insolence is ended. For the Lord has crushed your wicked power and broken your evil rule. You struck the people with endless blows of rage and held the nations in your angry grip with unrelenting tyranny. But finally, the earth is at rest and quiet. Now it can sing again. Even the trees of the forest, the cypress trees and the cedars of Lebanon sing out this joyous song. Since you have been cut down, no one will come now to cut us down. In the place of the dead, there is excitement over your arrival. The spirits of world leaders and mighty kings, long dead, stand up to see you. With one voice, they all cry out, Now you are as weak as we are. Your might and power were buried with you. The sound of the harp in your palace has ceased. Now maggots are your sheet and worms your blanket. How you are fallen from heaven, O shining star, son of the morning. You have been thrown down to the earth, you who destroyed the nations of the world. For you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven and set my throne above God's stars. I will preside on the mountain of the gods far away in the north. I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the most high. Instead, you will be brought down to the place of the dead, down to its lowest depths. Everyone there will stare at you and ask, Can this be the one who shook the earth and made the kingdoms of the world tremble? Is this the one who destroyed the world and made it into a wasteland? Is this the king who demolished the world's greatest cities and had no mercy on his prisoners? The kings of the nations lie in stately glory, each in his own tomb. But you will be thrown out of your grave like a worthless branch, like a corpse trampled underfoot. You will be dumped into a mass grave with those killed in battle. You will descend to the pit. You will not be given a proper burial, for you have destroyed your nation and slaughtered your people. The descendants of such an evil person will never again receive honor. Kill this man's children. Let them die because of their father's sins. They must not rise and conquer the earth, filling the world with their cities. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. I myself have risen against Babylon. I will destroy its children and its children's children, says the Lord. I will make Babylon a desolate place of owls filled with swamps and marshes. I will sweep the land with the broom of destruction. I, the Lord of Heaven's armies, have spoken. The Lord of Heaven's armies has sworn this oath. It will all happen as I have planned. It will be as I have decided. I will break the Assyrians when they are in Israel. I will trample them on my mountains. My people will no longer be their slaves, nor bow down under their heavy loads. I have a plan for the whole earth, a hand of judgment upon all the nations. The Lord of Heaven's armies has spoken. Who can change his plans? When his hand is raised, who can stop him? This message came to me the year King Ahaz died. Do not rejoice, you Philistines, that the rod that struck you is broken, that the king who attacked you is dead. For from that snake, a more poisonous snake will be born, a fiery serpent to destroy you. I will feed the poor in my pasture, the needy will lie down in peace. But as for you, I will wipe you out 
with famine and destroy the few you who remain. Wail at the gates, weep in the cities, melt with fear, you Philistines. A powerful army comes like smoke from the north. Each soldier rushes forward eager to fight. What should we tell the Philistine messengers? Tell them the Lord has built Jerusalem. Its walls will give refuge to his oppressed people. This message came to me concerning Moab. In one night, the town of Ar will be leveled and the city of Kir will be destroyed. Your people will go to their temple in Dibon to mourn. They will go to their sacred shrines to weep. They will wail for the fate of Nebo and Mediba, shaving their heads in sorrow and cutting off their beards. They will wear burlap as they wander the streets. From every home and public square will come the sound of wailing. The people of Heshbon and Eliale will cry out. Their voices will be heard as far away as Jehaz. The bravest warriors of Moab will cry out in utter terror. They will be helpless with fear. My heart weeps for Moab. Its people flee to Zoar and Eglath, Shalishia. Weeping, they climb to the road of Luhith. Their cries of distress can be heard all along the road to Horonaim. Even the waters of Nimrim are dried up. The grassy banks are scorched. The tender plants are gone. Nothing green remains. The people grab their positions and carry them across the ravine of willows. A cry of distress echoes through the land of Moab from one end to the other, from Eglaim to Beer Elim. The stream near Dibon runs red with blood, but I am still not finished with Dibon. Lions will hunt down the survivors, both those who try to escape and those who remain behind. Send lambs from Sila as tribute to the ruler of the land. Send them through the desert to the mountain of beautiful Zion. The women of Moab are like, left like homeless birds at the shallow crossings of the Arnon River. Help us, they cry. Defend us against our enemies. Protect us from their relentless attack. Do not betray us now that we have escaped. Let our refugees stay among you. Hide them from our enemies until the terror is past. When oppression and destruction have ended and enemy raiders have disappeared, then God will establish one of David's descendants as king. He will rule with mercy and truth. He will always do what is just and be eager to do what is right. We have heard about proud Moab about its pride and arrogance and rage, but all that boasting has disappeared. The entire land of Moab weeps. Yes, everyone in Moab moans for the cakes of raisins from Kir Hareseth. They are all gone now. The farms of Heshbon are abandoned. The vineyards of Sibma are deserted. The rulers of the nations have broken down Moab, that beautiful grapevine. Its tendrils spread north as far as the town of Jazer and trailed eastward into the wilderness. Its shoots reached so far west that they crossed over the Dead Sea. So now I weep for Jazer and the vineyards of Sibma. My tears will flow for Heshbon and Iliale. There are no more shouts of joy over your summer fruits and harvest. Gone now is the gladness, gone the joy of harvest. There will be no singing in the vineyards, no more happy shouts, no treading of grapes in the wine presses. I have ended all their harvest joys. My heart's cry for Moab is like a lampant on a harp. I am filled with anguish for Kir Hareseth. The people of Moab will worship at their pagan shrines, but it will do them no good. They cry to the gods in their temples but no one will be able to save them. The Lord has already said these things about Moab in the past, but now the Lord says, within three years, counting each day, the glory of Moab will be ended. From its great population, only a feeble few will be left alive. This message came to me concerning Damascus. Look, the city of Damascus will disappear. It will become a heap of ruins. The towns of Aruer will be deserted. 
flocks will graze in the streets and lie down undisturbed with no one to chase them away the fortified towns of israel will also be destroyed and the royal power of damascus will end all that remains of syria will share the fate of israel's departed glory declares the lord of heaven's armies in that day israel's glory will grow dim its robust body will waste away the whole land will look like a grain field after the harvesters have gathered the grain it will be desolate like the fields in the valley of rephaim after the harvest only a few of its people will be left like stray olives left on a tree after the harvest only two or three remain in the highest branches four or five scattered here and there on the limbs declares the lord the god of israel then at last the people will look at their creator and turn their eyes to the holy one of israel they will no longer look on their idols for help or worship that what their hand have made they have they will never again bow down to their asherah poles or worship at the pagan shrines they have built the largest cities will be like a deserted forest like the land the hivites and amorites abandoned when the israelites came here so long ago it will be utterly desolate why because you have turned from the god who can save you you have forgotten the rock who can hide you so you may plant the finest grape vines and import the most expensive seedlings they may sprout on the day you set them out yes they may blossom on the very morning you plant them but you will never pick any grapes from them your only harvest will be a load of grief and unrelieved pain listen the armies of many nations roar like the roaring of the sea hear the thunder of the mighty forces as they rush forward like thundering waves but though they thunder like breakers on a breach god will silence them and they will run away they will flee like chaff scattered by the wind like a tumbleweed whirling before a storm in the evening israel waits in terror but by dawn its enemies are dead this is the just reward of those who plunder us a fitting end for those who destroy us listen ethiopia land of fluttering sails that lies at the head waters of the nile that sends ambassadors in swift boats down the river go swift messengers take a message to a tall smooth-skinned people who are feared far and wide for their conquests and destruction and those whose land is divided by rivers all you people of the world everyone who live on the earth when i raise my battle flag on the mountain look when i blow the ram's horn listen for the lord has told me this i will watch quietly from my dwelling place as quietly as the heat rises on a summer day or as the morning dew forms during the harvest even before you begin your attack while your plants are ripening like grapes the lord will cut off your new growth with pruning shears he will snip off and discard your spreading branches your mighty army will be left dead in the fields for the mountain vultures and wild animals the vultures will tear at the corpses all summer the wild animals will gnaw at the bones all winter at that time the lord of heaven's armies will receive gifts from this land divided by rivers from this tall smooth skinned people who are feared far and wide for their conquests and destruction they will bring the gifts to jerusalem where the lord of heaven's armies dwells